announced uh, news to the market this morning. It's buying another tobacco packaging company. What do you make of its strategy? And I'm just seeing its shares coming online. Uh, just w They were slightly weaker. They've just turned flat. Amcor should do pretty well in today's market, and that's because of the big tumble that we've seen in the Aussie dollar. If we have a look at Amcor uh, today announcing that it's bought a tobacco packaging company in Mexico. They've recently also made an acquisition in Argentina, also in the area of tobacco packaging. And if we have a look at how it places in terms of global firms, it has a number one um, number one place in this area so looking like it's expanding in an area where it is already number one and for Amcor its strategy uh, has seen the company really change quite a bit in the last five years if we have a look at what it aims for it aims to be uh, the top in the top five packaging firms the top three in its chosen markets and if we have a look at uh, its gearing levels at the moment it is on the lower end of its target it's at about 47 percent at the moment and it targets about 45 to 55 percent so certainly more room for acquisitions there if we have a look at the split in terms of earnings, 20% of its earnings is here domestically, while 80% is offshore. And that means the fall that we've seen in the Aussie dollar over the past month has been good news for a company like Amcor. And that's certainly been reflected in the share price. In the last month, we've seen the shares up by 7.9%. And although this is going to be a difficult day on the Aussie, ma Aussie market, we'd expect a stock like Amcor to outperform. Expected on the market. And I just would, would be interested in your take on the suggestion that uh, today's week weakness or the weakness that we're likely to see over the next few sessions perhaps could be attributed to the market basically uh, the, the correcting because we have seen such a good run in the quarter so far. Well, today is going to be a weak market, but I think uh, even ex um, exaggerating uh, what's happened overnight is the fact that we're heading into a long weekend, and it's a long weekend where we do see those non-farm payroll numbers. So it's probably the biggest market-moving event uh, globally. So those non-farm payroll numbers uh, will be released while the Australian market is closed. So we'll probably see some squaring out off of positions. Of course, the lead's looking pretty dismal for the Aussie market. We saw the S&P 500 in the US down by 1%. And of course, Europe in focus, a terrible Spanish bond auction where we did see 10-year yields once again go north of 5.7%, very much in focus. We saw the ECB rates decision on hold there. And the ECB saying that the risks are, there are risks to inflation. So the market read that as no more liquidity being pumped into the system in Europe. In the week to date, the Australian market, though, has been quite flat. But given the leads overnight and the big fall that we've seen in commodities, we're going to have a pretty bad day. BHP, Rio Tinto, both down by around about 3% in London. And in terms of the US ADRs, also seeing some sharp losses there. So the big miners are going to be watched, especially BHP. We saw it bouncing off an important technical level this week at $34. So that $34 uh, level is going to be once again watched. We've seen it bounce off this level eight times over the eight, last eight months and it looks like this is going to be another test. But commodities in general saw a very sharp move downwards. We saw gold prices down by 3.5%, silver prices down by 6.7%, and oil prices down by 2.4%. So given, uh, given uh, the, the fall that we've seen in commodities, the Australian market looks pretty ugly today. We'll be watching the 4,300-point mark. If we have a look at a one-year chart of the Australian market, this is what it looks like. And you can that, see that 4,300-point mark has been a strong resistance level. This week we cracked through it, but once again, it does look like we're going to be looking at this level as uh, a level of support and hopefully it will hold. So for the month of March, Julia, ASX has put out its uh, numbers. What do you make of them? How are the stats looking? Some interesting trends developing for the Aussie share market in 2012 so far. We've seen the ASX come out with its March numbers. We've got about 2,223 entities listed on the ASX now. But I guess more interesting is the fact that we have seen volumes increase while the value trader per day has fallen. And that really points to more frequent trading but smaller parcel sizes and indeed if we compare it to a year ago a year ago the average parcel size of a trade on the ASX was six thousand dollars this has actually fallen quite substantially to four thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars in terms of the year to date the average traded per day has been about four point eight billion dollars per day that's down from five point two billion dollars in the same previous corresponding period last year so altogether it does look like our traders invest Investors uh, trading with smaller parcel sizes more frequently and unfortunately those numbers not looking too good um, at this stage volumes are up but unfortunately the value traded uh, has been down we have a look at the ASX performance in the month of May it's been up by 0.7% of 
Of course, we have seen markets like Japan beating the Australian market. Japan's been up by 3.7 percent. We've seen the U.S. up by 3.1 percent, and even Germany's DAX up by 1.3 percent. But on the flip side, we've managed to beat Singapore as well as Hong Kong. Singapore has been only up by 0.5 percent, while Hong Kong has actually fallen by 2.2 uh, uh, percent. So altogether, the Australian market we've seen a gain in March, but altogether those trading statistics still looking pretty dismal.